All right, guys, welcome back to the World Championship Series Europe Premier League. As we have already had uh, a quick conclusion to our first series, and now we're going to be moving on to the next one. Yeah, two different types of aggressive play. Um, well, aggressive with economy in game number one, and then aggressive with actual Colossus in game number two. Two surprises for Cass, and two losses with that as well. Unfortunately, now goes to the lower bracket, and Genius goes to the winners. But now we have, some may say, the highlight game of the evening, mm. because both players that are going to play next have quite large fan bases, to say the least. Of course, it's Grubby, the player that nobody hates at all, the individual that nobody really hates at all. Everyone loves Grubby. And then you've got TLO, who's currently in the lead in the WCS point system, uh, being in rank 13 so far. Did quite well for himself last year, and we'll see how well he can do this year. Yeah, I, I think after last year's performance for TLO, he's certainly saying to himself, Oh, I was this close. He was like 250 points behind Scarlet, who was the second mm -hmm. uh, foreigner uh, or non-Korean mm -hmm. uh, eligible to actually try and advance on to BlizzCon. But he was very, very close. Very close indeed. He's not going to let that go away from him. He's currently like ninth or so, or is he a little bit further down? Uh, but he's currently sat really, really high. So he's going to look at this as a fantastic opportunity to accrue more points and uh, solidify that position. Absolutely. And uh, of course, Grobby would like to challenge for the 2014 positions as one of the highest non-Koreans, I'm sure, no doubt in my mind. And let's be honest here, I really think that Grubby approaches these types of groups and tournaments very well. He's very well prepared uh, and would have taken, I'm pretty sure he's taken at least a few days at least, maybe more off streaming to really focus yeah. on specific builds, focus on which maps he's going to veto and how TLO would approach this series and put a lot of thought into this one. Um, so we'll have to see what he does have prepared to try to challenge for this group. As well, he didn't like TLO, only made it out the round 32 once last year. And uh, he did do well though. He did get a, a good finish, a good top four finish. Yeah. That was very impressive during season two. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very impressive. A lot of that um, in the end, you know, he, he got toppled by PVP, but it was very, very close between him and Duck Duck, That's who right. eventually went on to win the entire tournament uh, during that. So, I mean, it could have gone either way, really. He could have ended up being the champion, for all we know. But he didn't. This is true. Do you have any favorites then for this one? Grubby versus Tilo. It's a bit of a classic match, really. They've played a lot over the years. Yeah. Uh, and over the years in StarCraft, they are five games apiece. Five, five in best of threes, best of fives, and so on over the years. Who do you think actually edges out in front in this one then? I've, it's, it's really hard to say. After watching TLO's amazing performance during uh, Brazil and being able to defeat people like Bomber, that's really, really cool. But at the same time, Grubby's been working on his games really, really well as of late as well. Mm -hmm. he's, he's improved so much in the, uh, during 2013 and moving into 2014. We haven't seen a huge amount of him, but I can only imagine that... I mean, this is the first series of the day. This is an opponent he absolutely 100% knew he was going to be playing, and Grubby is very good at that. Yeah, and I think which would help Grubby a lot more is if he's able to win this first game. Because when it comes to being strong in preparation, you prepare for the first game that goes to plan. And then you, of course, have one of two opponents mm. to play in the winners, which he would have also put a bit of thought into. But going down to the loser bracket, you don't really know who you're going to go up against. And it's harder to, of course, prepare. But TLO, with that third and fourth place finish in the Intel Extreme Masters Sao Paulo, then followed that up with the Intel Extreme Masters Clone War. Unfortunately, had a bit of a, a low finish, not being able to make it into the main tournament itself, losing in the in the uh, open bracket. But now comes into this, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure he's going to come into this quite motivated to do well, because he knows how important it was for him last year to gain the points from the Premier League, because that's where, like Grubby, he did miss out on a lot of points, and he did grab a lot of points, uh, over half of his points, from events outside of the Premier League. Yeah. So if he can repeat something along the lines like that, which he's already started with, the top four finish in Sao Paulo, he would be looking good for his uh, running this year. I would say for TLO, though, it's after his Brazil performance, which was fantastic, mm -hmm. um, I think for any players competing during Cologne, it wasn't that big of an upset to go out in the earlier rounds because 
I mean, look at the talent that we actually had at Cologne. It was going to be very difficult uh, for anybody to really go so far in that tournament. And we saw some of the best games of StarCraft I have seen in a long, long time at that tournament. So rivaling that would have yeah. been extremely difficult. So the first map of the day here between these two players is going to be Altazim Stronghold. What oh. are your initial thoughts on that then? All right, let's... It's <laughs> all right, old slobber knocker of a map. Yeah, I, I really find this difficult for Zerg players to play on. It's uh, so big that it's hard to do any sort of timings to punish any greedy play from the Protoss or Terran player. And the longer the game goes on, the harder it's going to be able to deal with, for example, pylons across the map, warp prisms across the map that can get into your main base, the warp prism, mm -hmm. and you're going to be obviously expanding further and further out into the map. It's going to be hard to, do, to kind of deal with those things. Yeah. So at every different stage of this map here, you have to give a bit of an edge to Protoss. Yeah, um, and Grubby's not afraid of drawing it out long. I've seen time and time again him going onto this map and just sit back, chill yeah. out, relax, play his own game for to a, to a lesser degree of just in case, you know, something like a crazy Spire timing will come out or something like that. But he's just going to play his own game, I think. Uh, and something that's not so good on this map that a lot of Protoss fear is Swarm Hosts. But to that point, TLO normally doesn't like playing with them anyway. Yeah. So he's he's had to use them because it's the yeah. best tool to use in some scenarios. But he's not a big fan of uh, using Swarmos. He doesn't like that play. He uh, idolizes Jadong's style of play, which uh, until as of recent was very non-Swarmos heavy. So even mm. a player that didn't like to use him is using him himself. So I think throughout this series we could see some Swarmos from TLO, but on this map it is more difficult to accomplish. It's a lot larger. How are the Swarmos going to put pressure on on a map this size? <laughs> Um, so a big, big one to kick it off on, and uh, it's it's really close to call which one of these is uh, is going to be able to take this. And I can't believe really that all four players in this group are quite fan favorites, from Genius and his BlizzCon and GSL days to these two players and of course Cass. It's hard to and, and difficult to think that two of these players will be eliminated. Yeah, it could be two of these guys right now. Yeah, certainly could be. Um, Cass, you know. He kind of just got blindsided in that first series, unfortunately for him. So I, I think Cass can perform better than that. It was just a little bit sneaky there from Genius, who <laughs> you're saying that they're fan favorites. For me, whenever I think of Genius, I'm thinking two things. I'm thinking that Bubble Pop video, <laughs> and I'm also thinking that final that he had against Don Regu, which was the most fun GSL final of all time. I yeah, think. in between maps, so we're kind of... <laughs> So you know, messing around with each other. All right, so we are now loading into game number one now. All right, so yeah, Altrazim Stronghold, as you mentioned, for our first map. What a map to start, TLO versus Grubby off. I know a lot of people have been looking forward to this series, as you mentioned, two fan favorites, two huge fan favorites, a Warcraft 3 legend going up against a Supreme Commander <laughs> Supreme veteran. Supreme Commander legend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so we'll find out now who's going to win that first map, and it's going to be a big one as we now go on to game number one. As we have spawning down to the bottom left-hand corner, our blue Protoss representing the Netherlands. It is Grubby. And up to the top right-hand corner as our red Zerg representing Germany and Team Liquid. It's TLO. Yeah, the Netherlands and Germany, of course, have always had rivalry between the two of them. Mm -hmm. Close countries and all. Um, but you, I mean, I was looking at the head-to-head, -head and even though they are five games apiece over the lifespan of StarCraft, they actually haven't met in a competitive environment, online or offline, in exactly a year. And that last place and time was the Intel Street Masters Katowice. Oh, jeez. Right when Heart of the Swarm was released. They actually haven't met in competitive form since then. And that's a long time ago. So, of course, they play each other probably day in, day out on ladder, but... This is, a, this is a good one. This is a, a classic, as they say. This probe has moved out very, very early. So I'm curious to... I think he is assuming that his opponent would have gone hatchery first. Yeah, he he could cannon rush from this point. He also could be expecting maybe TLO to open up with some crazy six pull or something along the lines mm. there. But there's no uh, forge that's been or going to be queued up anytime soon. It's yeah. just a very early scout to get a read of where TLO is and what build TLO is using. And then he's just, Grubby's just going to kind of open up by the looks of it with a Nexus first here. Depends on how he gets there and yeah. if he gets there really with the probe or not. Well, likewise, TLO is also pulling no punches. He's he's going straight to the pool. So yeah. no hatchery first from him on such a big map. Not really. He's just playing a bit cautiously in this first game. Yeah. I, I think both players here know that 
each one of them are very capable of crazy builds. Yeah, yeah. To start a series. We know that Grubby would have prepared and chose this map for a reason. Tilo's played it out safe and a normal opening would have been like three hatcheries before spawning pool. But what happens if this was a cannon rush? Grubby played it very cautious with his scouting and decided to go Nexus, then Forge, hmm. which is quite a defensive build, but yeah. he has seen, of course, the spawning pool has completed. I mean, there are times you can just get away with actually not going Forge here, especially since TLO doesn't spot his opponent as well. So how yeah. would Lings realistically get over there quickly enough to put on pressure, even if it was against a gateway? But as you pointed out, both players playing it safe, playing it steady for the earlier portion. Yep, and we just have a, a regular setup here from Grubby. So it's just the uh, Nexus first, uh, oh no, Nexus then Forge, then Pylon and Gateway, and then the Cannon coming in. And then we'll be looking to take his gases next. And then from that point on, Cybercore and then a choice of tech. But Tilo is gonna open up with quite a fast third, not as fast as it could have been. And this pro will die. Bye bye. <laughs> Wow, that was that was a really yeah. aggressive explosion. Yep. <laughs> and well, yeah, that hatchery gets on the way as well. So from there on out, TLO's probably just gonna get speed, just go up to a normal game. And uh, mm. from here, Grubby, I won't be surprised if we saw Stargate from him in these positions. Yep, definitely I wouldn't be surprised. Um, there are gonna be two overlords that will eventually be around his base. There's one in the bottom right making its way around, and of course one on the top left, which he will know are there. It's very easy to know once your opponent is cross position like this, the overlords are gonna be outside your base roughly at the same time the Stargate finishes. And he is gonna add on a Zealot as well, just in case uh, that there was gonna be any Zergling run by or something. So just overall quite a safe opening here from Grubby. And Tilo is opening up his drone count quite a lot now though. Overlords popping, drones be building. It's 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 one of those situations where you uh, spawn in these locations and then it's a very, very slow mm. start to the game. There's very, very unlikely you're going to see anything hyper aggressive. One circling. Spots the Stargate too. Yeah, Gets nice. in there and uh, he didn't know that that could have been Stargate. It could have been a gateway attack, could have been a robotics facility, could have been anything really. But that's quite a big scout there from mm -hmm. Tilo, considering his overlords are so far away. He was willing to sacrifice those two Zerglings. Yeah, it was a nice scout indeed. And uh, from there on, now we just have TLO actually mm. pulling this Overlord back here on this bottom right hand side. So he's pretty much inferring, yeah, there's a base down there. I know there's a base, but uh, yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be up to overseers later on to really find out what's going on. Hiding his Overlord away from Phoenixes too, which True. he's expecting to come out here. We are seeing a bit of pressure come out from Grubby with a Zealot and also a Stalker to follow that up. And we also have plus one attack starting even before Phoenix production. Hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's quite aggressive there uh, in terms of that plus one. Upgrade and now Grubby is just going to poke on forwards. Zealot and Stalker have a very, very hard time of getting over here and actually pulls off drones to try and push this away. So, uh, you know, he's, he was just exploring the fact that there were no units. He didn't want him to drone uh, as freely as he would like to. Yeah. And that's why 14 links are now on the way. That's a lot of links, 16 yeah. links. That's a lot of links just to deal with this small amount of units here. Yeah. So Grubby's mission here with these units has been quite successful. Yeah. Um, but the Stalker might die now. Stalker may die. There is a sentry just now being built. These links can get over to the other side of the map. There is no wall off, remember? Not a complete wall off. No. So if these links were to be able to break the main base, considering that there is not a sentry and the stalk is going to die in the middle of the map, this can actually backfire that Grubby has forced these units out. Or, or maybe TLO had plans to counterattack immediately anyway. But this is actually quite a big part of this game. And I'm actually feeling a little bit worried for Grubby. It could be a little bit scary, right? Um, he's also adding on the spore crawlers behind it, though, so he will be able to deal with the phoenix pressure quite quickly. And there's not, there's only, he's only going to get one overlord in the map, right? The other one hid so well. Mm -hmm. So that's that's doing a lot of damage control very quickly here for TLO in this game, which is nice. These hmm. lings are going to cause Scrubby a headache, potentially, especially if he doesn't see the full amount of them, which he shouldn't. Yeah, like these ones can just now push away this Stalker, and then, oh, oh wait a minute. Stalker runs around. Oh, did he, he didn't see the lings moving across, did he? No. Uh, uh. There's a lot of them going across. Yeah, there is. And that sentry's not going to be out in time. If he actually goes right now, it's not going to be out in time. Ah, but he's not. He's not. He's just spreading them out everywhere to make sure his opponent doesn't have any hidden bases he anywhere. Could have I mean, of course, he didn't know if there was a sentry or not. But if yeah. he did, go for it. But that was a lot of links to scout around. 
Grubby's added on three extra gateways and then a robotics facility, so a very general opening from him. Just Phoenix Harass into plus one attack to aid him to take a third base. Three gateways to actually have a couple of units to support a third base. But then TLO, upon building these links, having a massive scout around. Yeah, I've got to say, this is actually really impressive. The and way in which he's... 17 drones right then. Seven, it he? was 17 then. Wow. Well... May as well be able to get away with it. But I, again, got to commend the scouting of these links. They have gone everywhere, pretty much, yeah. uh, to spot any pylons that would be close. So very, very good there by TLO. And now adding on double evolution chamber. He knows he can get away with this because his opponent is hard, hardly going to be able to put on too much pressure at this point. And Grubby's going to slowly start to take his expansion. Now TLO seems to be playing a Zirkling heavy style with the double evolution chamber. I'd imagine melee upgrades have come out. And if he does that... If he actually goes up to Hive and then goes up to something like Ultralisk, etc., they can work really, really well on this map. Especially mm -hmm. if we... Because TLO's creep spread is normally very good, but look at these links. Look how much work they're doing. He can get the cancellation, and he does. Very nicely done. Yeah, these cells do have plus one attack, and the Mothership Court is there. And he does back off, but he builds 18 more. Whoa. He knows that Grubby's game plan right now is to take a third, yeah. and he's going to put another round of pressure on. It's a nice attack, nice potential. Ooh, yeah. It's always good to find a queen here, yeah. especially because there's uh, two spores in each base almost, so that's a really nice pickup. Yeah, this spore's a little bit too far out uh, to really continuously put on the hurt. And then we still have so many lings now being produced. 40 are already out here, with the infestation pit going down behind this as well, so he's looking to transition on very, if very quickly. Grubby doesn't take any damage to this. This is very good for him, because of course that could have been 80 drones in a fourth base. Yeah but it is a lot of links instead. So this could be quite good for Grubby. Uh, Cannon finishes, which is always nice. Not walled in though, which nope. is a bit of a problem. Um, so uh, the pylon placement is actually really interesting and weird. Mm. I guess if he warps in zealots around it, then it's so much harder for Zerglings to actually get surface area on those, but the hive starts so quickly yeah. here. Tilo is not going to try to go in for an attack with these links. Maybe he's going to wait for 1-1 one, one first and then go in. But that will buy enough time to actually maybe even get a Colossus out. Adding more and more links at this point. His drone count isn't the highest it could be. Ooh. And there's also a bunch of sentries now. So, and Photon Overcharge. It's yeah. going to be very difficult to break this. Yeah, it's going to have to stick around. Uh, and now he even sees the Hive morphing in this aggressively. So this is a good scout out here from Grubby, uh, who can pretty much infer that, why are you getting a Hive that quickly and you yeah. have all of these links out? If he clicks on a Ling and he sees that plus one melee is there, then he's going to be happy. Yeah, I'm sure he's assuming exactly yeah. what he's playing against at this point. Uh, but a good set of harassment from Grubby. These Phoenixes have done a lot of work. Yeah, they have. Look at the resources lost. Not doing too badly at What's all. What's Tilo looking to do with these links, Claris? Come in from both sides, but that's hard against the Colossus as well as all those Zealots and the defensive position he has set up. Yeah, and he's they still building more. Hmm. It's a lot of Zerglings, which aren't really doing anything for him at this point. They're going to sit right oh. on top of that Colossus, and actually they're going to get it. Where are the Zealots going? Oh, they weren't there to reinforce. That was a total hazard. And the Immortal gets sealed out as well. Well, that, that was not meant to happen. No. <laughs> for Grubby, that, that, the Colossus were not meant to direct that. There was sentries, the Zealots. That was a bit of a mistake there, and of course that's very nice for TLO to be able to jump on that opportunity. 2-2 two, two on the way, Ultra's Cavern as well. And he's probably going to take more damage because there's more links coming out, and there's no. he lost quite a few sentries there. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he's going to make the same mistake twice. The links do try and go for the wraparound, but there's Zealots there to support that Colossus. Yep. So this is a different story. And Tilo, uh, not Tilo, so Grubby's adding second robotics facility now, getting Zealot Charge, uh, is obviously expecting to be playing against uh, Ultralis in this game, so he's going to start his, ultra, uh, his uh, Immortal production quite soon. Templar Archives has been added on as well. We do have the Viper being made from Tilo. We're looking to either Blinding Cloud or, of course, bring in the Colossus to the Ultralisks and Zerglings. But a nice pickup of that Queen inside the main base there. And this is a nice wall from Grubby on this mm. right-hand side and this third. So he's keeping himself well defended once again, but um, ah, he's going to have to doesn't want to play this game super, super long here. I mean, yeah. he's on a low drone count. It's like 65. Definitely could have saturated the fourth by now, only just now adding a couple of extra drones. And he's trying to build up a very strong army quite fast. Obviously going for such a fast hive and fast ultralist cavern, adding in some corruptors to support too. He may go for a bit of an attack in a moment once these two, two upgrades do complete. 
Finds a queen, but doesn't really want to stick around and lift that up. I don't think he even has energy. No, he does not. And those Corruptors will be able to shoo that away, so that's nicely done. But mm. look at this from Grubby. I mean, Grubby's economy is really, really soaring. He's at 74 probes. He's got yeah. the Dark Shrine. He's got double Immortals on the way. He's got Blink, Storm, plus three. A lot of tools here that can keep him well and truly safe. But this is quite a force that TLO is building up as well. Absolutely. Uh, Grubby, I don't think, has quite the right army yet, mm. but he's got a good position to play this very defensively minded. He's got a lot of Zealots with charge, with plus two, um, two Colossus, two Immortals, but they can be tucked away quite nicely. And he's even going to have Storm. So imagine if these the units try to attack in. It's funny he's using his Phoenixes like that. Yeah. Um, he could, of course, picked up a couple of units here, maybe, or try to pick off the Viper. But if... TLO tries to come into this with a wall that Grubby's created. Yeah. This is not going to end well for him. Yeah, those Ultras and Links just can't engage into that right now. So this is where TLO says, all right, you know what you're playing against. You know how to really deal with this frontal push. I'm going to yeah. have to go back home, get my Great Aspire, get everything else going, and more bases even potentially, yeah. and try and play this out longer. But what anti-air does Grubby really have to deal with Broodlords at this point, which is the next part of know. TLO's strategy. It started off with a Zircling Heavy, try to get some damage done to the third, try to do an attack with Ultralis and the Viper. Both didn't really do that much, but the next one potentially could. Blink is now starting, but there are no Stalkers yet. With these Gateways finishing up all 15 of them by the looks of it, then maybe he can do quite well with this Assault. And I don't think Robbie's quite prepared well enough yet to deal with this. It's a very aggressive play from, from TLO despite being on these four bases like this. Yeah, it's, for Grubby, his army is not exactly in the most cost-efficient of locations uh, it, to actually like take a fight itself mm. as is very zealot heavy, but he's so defensively set up that the army here for TLO can't really do a whole lot until now these Broodlords morphing, and this put a time, puts a timer on this army. Yeah, well, Blink is done, and plus three attack not far away either. Grubby's gonna probably have to take a fight here. If he doesn't, he'll lose the Nexus, he'll lose it, and he's swinging around the left-hand side here. Mm. He's got Storm, he's got a lot of units. Great Blinding Cloud to start this fight. Yeah, that means that they all have to move away from that, and those Immortals actually still going to work on this. One Ultralist from the left-hand side tries to get into the engagement, but unfortunately, really doesn't do a whole lot. These Stalkers need to blink forwards and somehow start bringing down the Broodlords because they doesn't have much else anti-air, and they will actually bring down uh, one or two of them, also warping in a lot from the south to actually push those back. And this has just been a great engagement in the end for Grubby. It's a fantastic engagement, and he's going to clean up these Broodlords. And there's an expensive army that Tilo uh, just threw at Grubby, and is down in supply now. These Immortals were fantastic. Even though the Blinding Cloud was a great start there, not the, the best fight from Tilo, but I can't help but feel he didn't have that many units there in the first place. I'm pretty sure he would have liked to have got damage done and slowed Grubby down with the first couple of attack waves that he had planned in this game, but... Without that, that was a good fight. Yeah. And now these Lings are going to have to do something about these reinforcements, but this army itself for Grubby is pretty darn scary. Yeah. He needs a pylon over here, though, and he's going to try and throw some down as quickly as he can do because he needs to reinforce. Ideally, I would say end up with Stalkers because there's probably just going to be a few more Broodlords morphing in. There's a lot of Ling wraparounds, Ooh. and they get the Ultralists. I mean, they get the Immortals, sorry. Actually, them being on top of the Ultralists is... Uh, sorry, the Immortals is absolutely fantastic. Now those Ultralists go completely uncontested. TLO just turned this around completely. <laughs> I think Grubby was expected to lose all the Immortals like that. That was yeah. huge. <laughs> if his army was all together, maybe that would have, uh, of course, would have gone differently, but that was massive. It shows how good adrenal glands and plus three weapons is, my friend. Those uh, lings absolutely ripped to shreds these units. And now the stalkers are gone as well, and Jeez. that now means that Teal Oak is back with his Broodlords were morphing at that time. There are zealots on the right-hand side here, but they're trying to go through spines and with lings backing up to help out. Wow, I, that was... That was a disaster for Grubby. <laughs> yeah, I mean, both fights from both players were not ideal, let's yeah. say. And, well, there's a few item plus here that do have Storm, but uh, they don't really have a whole lot of energy to use them. They do use them in the end, and there's Immortals trying to work away at the Zerglings. will clean that up, but he loses his fourth base, whilst TLO behind this has 82 workers uh, and is absolutely churning away. He's doing great. And uh, Grubby's mined out in his main base, and I don't think he's got enough resources to potentially fight against all these Broodlords and stuff at this point anymore. If he had a new base, maybe he could warp in enough to climb back up in supply, but... He lost way too many units and resources in that one engagement he took against yeah. TLO. That, that last engagement in the uh, over on the other side for TLO was basically the perfect engagement for TLO. Lings hitting Immortals, Ultralists hitting Stalkers. Other way around, maybe it wouldn't have gone as amazingly, but it was brilliant. And now he's just running away with it. There's not a whole lot Grubby can do. Yeah, and I, I, I can't help 
but feel the TLO after that initial fight was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And then Grubby was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Both of them taking it in turns there, but it is TLO that wins out overall. He's going to break this third base. And unfortunately for Grubby now, he has to GG out, taps out. TLO takes game number one, back and forth. Could have gone either way, but in the end, he is an op opportunistic little guy. And he does win his opponent's map choice. Grubby wanted to start on Artazim Stronghold that was not vetoed out by uh, Tilo, who I'm definitely sure had some other maps to get rid of first. He got rid of Yonsu, which is uh, can be proved difficult uh, for Zerg against Protoss, and Habitation Station, which we've also seen difficult. So I'm pretty sure this would have been one of those vetoes he would have liked if the map pool was larger than it is. But he does win on it, and it was Grubby's first pick. So this is a great start for the German. I have to ask, Sean, did Grubby have to move out at that point? Um, I guess, probably. Yeah? Because when you kill off such a high amount of resources like that, you want to be able to at least move out. Maybe he could have moved with the Mothership Core 2. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what happened to that, if it was killed in the, in the fight or something. But if that had been there, then it could have been different. But if you think about if Grubby had a better engagement, then he probably would have been able to kill off Tilo's army, yes. which would have allowed him to break into the fourth base. And from that point, the game goes on. Grubby can take a fourth, can recall back, so on and so on and so on. So I think the movement out was fine by Grubby. If he didn't, he just gives Tilo more time to rebuild back up. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was more so that his engagement was just not correctly done. Those poor immortals at the back, they got absolutely ripped apart. And now we move on to game number two in just a little bit, which is Frost. Another big map. Uh, and again, these bigger maps are working their way into the preferences are hell of a lot as of late. We see Frost a lot of the time. Ultrazeem Stronghold was something that people didn't really like too much of as it sprung onto the scene, but now we're seeing it a bit more as well. So a lot of the pros that, was, uh, that we're watching play really do like the comfort of these bigger maps being able to move it into a longer macro mm. game. Yeah, and Frost in cross positions is probably ideal for both players. Yeah. Um, because the, there's advantages for both players if they are in, in close positions. You could see some swarm host into Broodlord timings from TLO. But then in reverse, you could see a mortal pushes as well from Grubby because they are so close. If they spawn cross position, I'm pretty sure they're like, cool, good map. Let's uh, be happy with this together. All right, well, we're just waiting for them to get into the game as uh, Grubby normally takes quite a little while in between maps to compose himself, really think about exactly what's happened uh, mm -hmm. during that. We've seen it time and time again on stream where he closes his eyes and goes into his meditative state. Um, but now we will be jumping onto this in just a second. So do you think that TLO could take it 2-0? I mean, he looks pretty good there, but Grubby at the same time... I, like, I think Grubby will tie this up on yeah? this map. I think he could as well. I think he could as well. Uh, and it would be nice to see. I would like to see three maps from these guys uh, after we haven't seen them play against each other for quite a while, you mentioned. Yeah, in a year. Um, and we could even see them play again against each other, depending yeah. on how they do or one of these guys does against Genius in the winner's match. All right. Well, countdown's begun. We are going to be jumping right into game number two here at the World Championship Series Europe, as we have TLO and Grubby facing off against one another to determine who moves on to play against Genius, who previously defeated Cass to move on to that winner's match. Quite easily, too. Yeah, bit of a bop. Bit of a bop. But now let's jump right on in as we have, spawning up to the top left, our Red Zerg, currently one game up, representing Team Liquid. It is TLO. And down to the bottom right, cross positions, we have our blue Protoss. It is Grubby. Grubby! And cross positions, which is fantastic news for everybody, including the players and fans and us. Yeah, I do like cross positions here on Frost, so it's great to see. And uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Of course, this is the World Championship Series, if you did not know already, which you should. But do make sure to join in the discussions on Twitter, as always, with the hashtag WCS. And grubby, grubby, grubby. Moving out with that early probe again, keeping an eye on his opponent. But I wouldn't be surprised if, if TLO opened up spawning pool first on Alstrazim Stronghold. Why not yeah. do it here? And also, um, you know, TLO has tendencies. We all know him and love him for these reasons too. He likes to do stuff that sometimes isn't quite normal and sometimes not expected. No. Um, for example, if he'd spawned down in the bottom left right now, he couldn't hatch first, which is something which he does like to do. And also, if he was to go for the early spawning pool, Grubby would be able to find that out as well. Grubby doesn't get right into the base, if some players do realize why he didn't go as far in, is because he went deep enough in the base where he would see the creep. But with a forge this early, he's expecting Tilo most likely to go hatchery first here, which Tilo, if you watch his games personally, does 
a blinking lot of them. Mm -hmm. Well, not blink, blink, but there's a bloody lot of them. And this time it's not going to work out for Grubby here. He's going to go in and see the spawning pool and we'll just have to fall back on an expansion here. Yeah, and he loses a little bit of mining time with this. As you can see, CLO a little bit ahead uh, in that regard. He's going to try and block off this expansion. Uh, yeah. But he has to know at this point that the, ex the spawning pool was already down. Yeah, so. and he sends his second pro back. It yeah. was definitely looking to capitalize on the fact that TLO has a tendency to go hatch first a lot. Yep. Uh, so now Grubby opens up a little less economically uh, to try and look for that opportunity. But in the end now, he's just residing himself to that Nexus, which is pretty fast anyway. Yeah, And he even squeezes in a pylon because as the probe is returning, he had in the bank about 460 minerals. So he was like, you know what? If I just build a pylon now, it's not that much of a difference. Yeah. And also means I can continue probe production quite fast. Ooh. And he also spots the drone that's looking to go for a third. So that was nice um, to try and block that off for just a little bit. There's no Zerglings in production. Goes straight up to the queen. Uh, so this can block for quite a while. Yep. And Circles. every second does help, of course. Yeah, but it's also lining up there. And yeah, well, didn't really block off for really long at all, if you think about how the money was being spent, I guess. No, no, no. Um, oh, well. Gas taken here from Tilo. Um, doesn't know what his opponent's doing, by the way. It could have been a uh, gateway expansion here. And it's always good. I think if he knew that he was playing against this setup, then he probably would have just thrown down uh, the gas a lot later on. But it's fine to do so from this point. He could just get zirkling speed and pull out of uh, mining gas and then just play the game from that position. Could also be aggressive from that. Could also start to bank some gas for maybe double upgrades at the same time. Grubby's going to try and get in there, but uh, with the queen there, he's going to lose that probe. Just going to have a look around the third instead to see if it's there, as Tilo was portraying it to be. Because you never know. He could cancel and be a sneaky little guy. But two links are now on the way from that third as they were sat around there having a look to make sure that probe wasn't lingering. And now they're going to go across and have a look and see that there is indeed this wall off and know mm. pretty much what his opponent's up to from here on. Yep. And this is the first scout of Tilo all game. Ta -da. Congratulations, you now know you're playing against a Nexus or fast second base here. Plus one attack has been started for Grubby before adding on any tech structure here. So this could be for, of course, a plus one attack timing. Once that, uh, once that plus one is done, he moves out. But he does add on the Stargate pretty fast behind it here. So we'll see what he wants to do with this. Could be a very similar setup to how he played previously, which was to get that plus one attack for his Zealots to have an easier time to try to take his third base against a potentially aggressive TLO looking to slow that down. And the double guesses are going to go on here for Grubby as well. It is may, uh, natural. So this is just going to lend itself more to that macro focus for him as we have uh, just two in gas mm. for TLO right now. So bringing in still a little bit of gas to uh, eventually tech up where he can, which yeah. is always nice. Ooh, Roach Warren. We shouldn't see any aggression from Grubby at this point. Yeah. TLO is doing that because he sees the plus one attack, the Roach Warren, but the overlord on the natural here will almost certainly give him a comfort feeling because he's going to move in. First of all, he'll see the double gases, but he also can spot the cyber core without being threatened by anything. Mm -hmm. So he'll also be able to see that the Chronobus is low on the Nexus. And so that kind of doesn't really mean that this warp gate research is being rushed out. But with the probe moving out, that is, of course, a little bit worrying for Tilo. But with Zirkling speed, no problem. And Grubby, even if he had a small, small feeling of going for it, with Zirkling speed already out, no way. He's, he can't even get a probe out at this point. Oh, yeah, indeed. Uh, and that was really, really good uh, positioning there of these Zerglings just to make sure that they could deal with that. Not only the one Zergling at the front that did get chased away by the yeah. Zella, but also the second one uh, to be able to deal with that. And now he sees Phoenix as well. So he's just preparing himself for that kind of play. And Tilo's added on just a couple of links in case that same thing happens again. If a Zealot moves out and a Probe moves out, he can stop that. But overall, is banking the money because mm. he's adding on the drones, a couple of spore crawlers to protect himself against these Phoenixes or more so to protect the Queens against the Phoenixes. And he has thrown down the layer quite fast. So we could be looking with all the gases being taken, some Hydralist play potentially. Yeah, we could do. Uh, certainly on, could be on the cards here, as now Grubby is going to head in there and see two Spore Crawlers at each base. Uh, gets a little bit of an opportunity to kill off a few, though, as that mm -hmm. Spore Crawler wasn't finished. And but he spots the Hydro Den yeah. on time, too, right, right as it pops. Or 
as it is built. So now Grubby, all he has to do for, for this point onwards is get his Robo Flip Earth Bay, get out Colossi if he needs them to deal with this kind of play as well, and try and establish his third base, which TLO's being mindful of, is keeping these links around to try and deny that. Yeah, I like Grubby's pylon placement inside his main base there. Can actually warp in straight to the third, which is very useful and very yeah. helpful in trying to build this third nexus. But it is, by the looks of it, going to be like a Roach Hydra timing for the time being. The first thing that TLO tries to hit here, he's got a, quite a lot of money, building a lot of overlords. We'll start to see units being made soon. <gasps> whoa, Go whoa. back, Coloss! I did. <laughs> it's fine. Sorry. Nidus Network. We are going to see, <gasps> with the use of an overlord or Zerklings or whatever, probably the Zerklings down to the bottom right, a Roach Hydra timing fast. Ooh. Because it's going to be right outside the third base. If he does it up here, that's so cool. With Queen support too against any potential Void Rays or whatever. Wait, 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 wait. If he... Okay, so this has got a lot of range, uh, a lot of vision still. The Phoenix is just... It just spot it once, but they're not going to go towards the back there. They wouldn't. Unless they're trying to look for a Spire, which I don't think he's too worried about right now. Depending on the rally timing of the Mothership Core, it could spot this. Yes, but, but then good. again, there's a Ling that just moved ah. further north here. So okay, I think not, this is yeah. going to work here for Tilo, or at least yeah. he's going to plant it down. It just depends if Grubby can defend. The Robotics Bay isn't even finished, uh -oh. and the Nidus is on its way, and ah. it is in that position. It's uh, And it's out of range of the Mothership Core if it was to rally on back. So this is a great little play for him, and now he is Grubby's like, oh my, oh, god, he oh my god, oh my god, <laughs> He moves instantly straight up to the high ground. Ah! Force field off the Nidus, don't let it reinforce. Ah, okay, no, never mind. All right, this is this is going to be difficult to hold. Photon overcharge activated. The reinforcements are just going to come so fast, but Tilo is supply block, which actually plays a big part of this. Yeah, it does. How can you That's be aggressive out. in building units when you're supply block? That's actually rather big. He's going to change his focus, go to oh. the natural. He can switch between both, which is kind of smart. That's very, very cool. And those Phoenix are a little bit vulnerable. They can't stick around there with those Hydralis whirring away at them, and one already does fall. Grubby needs the Colossus. Where is it? It's, it's being built. Done. Oh, but also he needs Thermal Lance as well because they're going to have the same range as these Hydralis who are going to try and chase it down. So this is got, he's going to be so careful about this. This is a really strong army. Forge is gone. No cannons anymore uh -oh. apart from the two that are building. He just breaks in. He can sit right on top of this oh, Colossus. The Colossus oh. isn't even going to get out. Oh, <laughs> killing off the pylon. He really, really needs that Colossus. If he wants to, he could just actually kill off the Robo before yeah, it even pops. He's going to. He knows that's building a Colossus and there is no Colossus oh. in this game. And it looks like TLO has played a strategy we all kind of know and love him for. The Nidus Network, we never see the Nidus Network and TLO is going to use it. Yes, TLO. He is using it. It's brilliant, it's brilliant. And now he's just killing off the rest. GG, TLO will take it two to zero. Even our Netherlands resident producer is nodding his head. He's like, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Well done from TLO and he finds himself in the winner's match here and will be going up against Genius. So. That means Grubby will now go off to face off against Cass in the lower bracket. Of course, we'll be covering every single game with the next one being that winner's one. That was impressive. That was really cool. I, it's so nice to be able to actually see, uh, you know, a little bit more of an inventive strategy yeah. come out with Nidus Worms to actually put on your pressure against your opponent. And uh, he hit that beautifully. If, that's, if that is spotted, though, there's a big risk when you try that. Because, yes. of course, it speeds up the attack timing that you're going to do. Because usually you have to go across map and it's kind of far across positions. But if the Nidus Worm is spotted, which the bonus of it is that you can go straight to the Protoss base. But if it's spotted, the Protoss is a lot more active with their units. They try to see where the Lings are, where mm -hmm. the Overlord can be, and they would naturally just push it back and back and back. And further it goes back, the longer TLO is, the more time that he has to get the Colossus out. So it was important to spot that, almost like it's as important to spot the Spire when looking for yeah. Nautilus transitions. But unfortunately for TLO, uh, unfortunately for TLO, unfortunately for Grubby, it wasn't spotted. It's also really cool to note that I don't know if this is intrinsic in his plan, but having two spore crawlers at bases as opposed to one makes it a whole lot harder for Phoenix to poke around at those like mineral lines. I know the Hydralis Den was spotted, yes, but then the Nidus Worm was right behind those two spores as well, where Phoenix really don't want to poke around. So that was that was cool if that's part of the plan, but there you go. Yep. All right, well, that does it, guys, for our second series. We are going to go to a break, and then when we're back, we're going to have the winner's match. It's going to be Love Your Girlfriend's Genius going up against Liquid TLO.